would love for you to help people understand how from uh, our very beginnings as, as humans and our genetics and, and, and how we're built and what we were built to eat, why we are inherently herbivorous as humans. Sure. First, started looking into this, people would kind of look at, talk about the teeth, right? Mm -hmm. And they would say, well, you know, you look at, I mean, the obvious things, you look at a, say a, a lion or a dog's teeth and you compare it to a human's teeth. And clearly we do not have either the fangs or the kind of blade-like molars that you find in a carnivore, but it goes way beyond because it's not just the, the structure of the teeth, it's also the jaw mechanics. Because in herbivores, the jaws actually, the teeth slide across each other horizontally, which is what gives you that grinding motion you need to grind up plant foods. Because plant foods have fiber. And to get at the nutrients inside the plant cells, you got to grind up that, those plant cells to get at the fiber. Meat, uh, animal tissue has no fiber. So all you need to do is slice off a chunk of it, swallow it, and the digestive enzymes do the rest. So carnivore jaws actually close in a vertical fashion to give you that slicing motion with those blade-like molars slide past each other vertically, slice off the flesh, slice through tendons, they swallow a big chunk of it, and then they have this incredibly powerful acid that just digests this, really liquefy this stuff and help them digest it. Even more interesting, carnivores have gigantic stomachs because in the wild, they typically will only make a kill approximately every seven to 10 days. And most of the time that they hunt, they are not successful. So they spend a lot of the energy that they have to get back when they finally do make a kill. So they can actually consume 30% of their body weight at a single meal. And they, so they have these huge stomachs. So that means like a lion that weighs 300 pounds can consume 30% of her body weight at one meal. So that's uh, what, uh, like 90 pounds of flesh at a single meal, which is a huge amount of food. So they can eat enough at a single meal to last them for 10 days. Herbivores, very different. Herbivores have much smaller stomachs because plant foods take a lot more processing. Herbivores have to eat multiple times each day. They eat a small meal, they process that meal, then they go back and they eat another meal um, and process that. So they have to eat multiple times just to consume enough calories to last them a single day. And again, that's the kind of digestive system we have. We have the a small stomach that we uh, process a meal and then we go back and we consume another meal so that we can consume enough calories to last us a, a single day. The we one have, that I love that you talk about is the, um, cause Dotsie's an Olympic athlete. So we could talk about that, the, the how um, carnivores are on their toes more than we. Oh, yes. That has to do with the fact that carnivores are designed to, to chase prey. So they are permanently on their toes so that they can uh, be ready to run. Whereas we're flat-footed because uh, we're designed for walking because herbivores, again, are designed for foraging. Carnivores are designed for predation. And so it's just, uh, I mean, the, the differences are just, I mean, myriad. The small intestines and plant eaters are 10 to 12 times body length and the herbivores are much shorter. The large intestines in, in the herbivores are much longer, um, have a pouched appearance in the carnivores. They're much shorter, straighter, um, which is why when we eat meat, the flesh stays in our system too long, starts to rot, creates cancers. That's why we get colon cancers. The, the carnivores don't. Um, herbivores have appendix, carnivores don't. Um, it's just, again, on and on and on. The differences are just too many to kind of uh, re recount here, but I would encourage people to go on YouTube and look at my lecture, Are Humans Designed to Eat Meat? And it goes through all of those differences 
and just list them so that they can get a good sense of just all of the, the various differences between the meat eaters and the plant eaters. And they'll see very in great detail the, the differences between the two of us or, or the, the differences between the different species.